It is 11.30 a.m. on uh, Tuesday, August 27th. We are at the Golden Court Community Room and this is the Board of Commissioners for Hadley Housing Authority. The first order of business is topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance. I'll first ask Pamela, is there anything we need to add? No. <coughs> Set, We're you. all set. Does anyone else have anything of urgent note that is wasn't available 48 hours in advance? No. Nothing? No. Let's move along to the approval of the minutes. Uh, the first approval is for June 4th, 2024. These minutes were tabled for revisions. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the minutes of June 4th, 2024? I get a motion. Crystal Jackson moves that we approve the minutes of Second. June 4th. Rich seconds. <coughs> Any discussion? Sue? No. Crystal? No. Um, all I have is uh, just some um, <coughs> grammatical or whatever spelling or whatever. So I'm going to put these aside and everything is marked. Rich, do you have anything? Nothing. No. All right. So I will uh, call for the vote, but uh, we will need to amend the approval to include the corrections, additions, corrections, and uh, deletions. Who would like to make that uh, amended motion? I will. Crystal Jackson makes the amended motion. Can I get a second? Rich seconds. Let's call for the vote. Uh, Sue? Yes. Crystal? Crystal? Risa says yes. Rich? Yes. 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 Okay, so carried. The next minutes to approve are July 23rd, 2024. This is our annual plan meeting minutes. Uh, can I get a motion, please? I give you a motion, too. Crystal Jackson moves to approve July 23rd, 2024 minutes. Can I get a second? second. Rich seconds. Uh, discussion? Sue? No. Crystal? No. Uh, let me double check. I think I have nothing. I have only one or two things. So I'll just put those on the amended minutes. Rich? No. All right. Can I get a, a motion to amend with uh, two uh, grammatical corrections? Yes. Crystal moves to amend with the two, uh, the motion to include uh, two grammatical corrections for the minutes of July 23rd, 2024 annual plan meeting minutes. Can I get a second? Okay. Rich seconds. Call for the vote. Sue? Okay. Yes. Crystal? Yes. Risa is yes, Rich yes. is yes. Let's move along. Motion carried. Uh, July uh, 2C is July 30th, 2024, regular meeting minutes. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Crystal Jackson moves to approve. Second. Rich seconds. Discussion, Sue? Nothing. Nothing, Crystal? No. Um, I have just a couple of grammatical things, no big deal. I will put these on the stack of corrections. Rich, anything? No, I have nothing. Okay, uh, can I get a motion to amend for grammatical corrections to accept as, amend as corrected? Yes. Crystal moves to accept the minutes of July 30th, 2024, regular minutes as corrected. Um, that's all I have. Can I get a second? I'll do a second. Rich seconds. I'll call for the vote. Yes. Sue. Yes. Yes. Crystal. Yes. From yes. Risa. And yes. Rich says yes. So carried. Now we're to the executive director report. The first item is the warrant report, which does require a vote. Rich, would you please pre present? Okay. The warrant report uh, transacted between 725-24 and 725-24. And the amount of... It's here. Keep it. it should be right there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, five thousand five hundred eighty-four dollars and twenty-seven cents. Can I get a second? A second. Crystal Jackson seconds. Discussion. Sue. Nothing. Crystal. Nothing. I have nothing. Nothing. Rich has nothing. Call for the vote. I vote. Sue. Yes. Crystal's yeah. yes. I am yes. Rich yes. is yes. Let's uh, so carried. All right. Uh, uh, and then now the next one is the warrant report. 
the from uh, transactions between 71124 and 71124 in the amount of uh, $24,340.61. Can I get a second? Yeah, a second. Excellent. Discussion? Sue? Nothing. Crystal? No. I have nothing. nothing. Rich? No. Nope. Call for the vote? Sue? Yes. Crystal? Yes. Risa is yes, Rich yes. is yes, motion is so carried. The warrant report is approved. And now we have unit vacancy report. Uh, Treasury report. Oh, I'm sorry, Treasurer's report. Rich. Uh, uh, Treasury report as of July 31st, 2024. Did everybody look at the amount? Yes. Or look it over? I did, yes. Are you else okay? Up to speed. Great. No vote this is vote. no vote required, so is there any discussion? Sue? Nothing. Crystal? No. I have nothing. No. Rich? No. Nothing. No. Um, then I think we can set this as done. Do you have anything, Pamela, that you would like us to be of note here? No. Just, no. No? Okay. So the next thing is unit vacancy report. Sue's willing to give the unit vacancy report. What the do you have for report as, as of July 31st, 2024, yeah, Golden Court Apartments, a uh, total of five vacancies. Burke's Way, Unit 705, is two vacancies. Total vacancies, seven. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Pamela? Not at all. This does not require a vote. Uh, Sue, would you like to give the tenant account receivable report? It's just right after unit vacancy. It's yeah. it's hooked together, stapled together. Okay. The tenant count receivable report. Do you want just the total on the bottom, the subtotal, or do you want me to do each line? You have two subtotals. So for July 24th. For July 31st, 2024, the total is $10,036.70. And that's for uh, the total of 667 and 705, both units. And on 667 and 705 for the date of July 31st, 2025, the total 2024. is 2024. The total is $7,160.41. And we're probably going to need a little more explanation, Pamela. Uh, so the we have payment agreements, et cetera. Yep, we're working on payment agreements. We're in court. There's a uh, eviction coming up. Okay, and we've done every. I know you've done everything you can to try to prevent that. So, um, and then we still have the fraud repayment agreement. So we're doing all the everything. Repayment agreements are good. All the repayment agreements are good. Okay, we don't need a vote on that. Now, Pamela, the capital report. So, do you, can you oh, check oh, again? So they're saying on Friday the twenty third. We already did that. We just did it. Hmm? Friday the 23rd, they're saying they sent it to you. But uh, we're on the capital report right now. So isn't that part of capital? No. But I have no other capital report. Okay, so just the capital report as it exists. Okay, which is actually at the back of the treasurer's report, I think. Okay. So we didn't have any questions during that. Capital report is, you know. So the CFA 5001, they said they sent it on what day? Friday. And that would have been the 23rd. So it should say Vincent Du, D-U, via DocuSign, something like that. And then check your spam and all that, of course. Yeah, my, I've got my thing set up to check everything, including spam. But I would go directly to the spam folder and look for Vincent. DU. Is that yes. right? Yep. There is nothing. The last time I had something with somebody named Vincent was in 2019, so. Oh, how about, I'm sorry. Try DocuSign. I've already done a search for DocuSign. NA4. There are no matches. 
I, 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 if I do just DocuSign, I get matches, but nothing since May. It, was there an error in my email address? That no. no? Yeah. I am getting nothing. I've checked trash, spam. I haven't emptied my spam lately, so everything should be there. Okay, so we'll move on. Um, Pam, we didn't even see, we can't even get a copy of it. To can they send you a copy and you can forward it to me or something? It's oh. because it's stock you sign. So, so to oh. keep the integrity of. Oh my. Okay. A new link sent. In the meantime, if you want to move on to the chimneys while I'm... Let's do that. Ahead. Okay, so um, on the agenda, it's 3G is the rebid of the chimney project number 117084. This does require a vote. Um, Where's that information? Just keep going. It, it looks like this. Roy S. Brown Architects. Mm -hmm. So do you want to present that or do you want me to bumble through it? Thank you. Yep, so this is a rebuilding because RCAT, if you recall, did not, um, they made one mistake in the bid where they didn't put it in a paper. It went on combines, it went out to all, no, I'm sorry, they did put it in the paper. They didn't send it additionally to three other emails. Than outside. Yeah, yeah emails. emails. Which was, so it's overkill. Yeah. So we went out to bid, and then, so the new low bidder is. Best chimney. Best chimney. We have the yeah. letter from him. We had to cancel the contract we'd already signed before because the process wasn't appropriate mm -hmm. according to the state rules and regs. Mm -hmm. So now it had we had to void that contract and rebid this. Unfortunately, and the, it's like the local guy lost the best it. chimney. Yeah, I saw that. The, uh, that's the only one. The we have a service. Roy S. Brown Architects, who review all bids okay. and, and do all the due diligence, like the history of the companies, et cetera, et cetera, whatever the state requires. And they have recommended Best Chimney Services, Inc. I'm not even going to say the amount, so in case it happens again, I guess, unless you want to say the you amount. $22,400. Okay. So you have to approve the bid and yeah. the contract. Okay, so I need a, um, a motion to approve. <coughs> The bid from Best Chimney Services Inc. in Dedham in the amount of twenty-two thousand four hundred. Can I get that motion? motion. Christian uh, C Crystal motions for approval of Best Chimney Services in the amount of twenty-two thousand four hundred. Can I get a second? I'll do a second. Rich seconds. Discussion. Sue. Nothing. Crystal. Nothing. I have nothing. Rich. Yeah, I just wondered if there was more, uh, lo more local people to do it. And there does and not appear to be, no, right? No, I know. And then, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, yeah. when do they plan on starting? Do you know? If it, it, they get to receive the bid? Yeah. Will they yeah. start right away or do they go yeah, for so winter it, it should, No, it should, it should just be maybe, you know, very quickly within the no. next six weeks. <laughs> Which is just a okay. crazy that, amount that, of time. That's all I have. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I'll call for the vote. Sue? Yes. Crystal? Yes. Risa is yes. Rich? Yes. Okay, that motion carries for approval of Best <coughs> Chimney Services for uh, project number 117084 in the amount of 22400 Okay, so would someone like to do the work order report while Campbell <coughs> is doing that other work on the um, rebit, I mean on the CFA 5001? Would somebody like to do the work order report? If you can you assist, can, I can. I'll be happy to assist. Okay. Go ahead, Crystal. So are we going to approve the work order report from C&K Roofing, Inc.? No, no, no. Oh. So this work order report. These oh, are we're just. We're done with this? We're done. We've already oh. voted, so we're done. On all of it? No, we only vote on one, the recommended. Oh. Whoever was the lowest bid. The recommended low bid right. that passed. The so due whatever he recommends is what we no. Uh, well, oh, yeah. he's recommending this because it's a low bid, and this company uh, he did his due diligence to right. investigate right. this. This is all it's, it's all done. Here. We've already voted. Okay. We're done. Got a copy of it. So yeah. this is the work order right. report. Yeah. Okay. 
Can I ask? It looks just like this. Yeah, this is not it. No, no, keep going. You're, it's okay. like the last thing in All your... Right. Okay. Sorry, people. Okay. Work order. Somebody's phone's going on. I think it's yours. Is it? Oh, God, it's me. <laughs> Go ahead, Crystal. Work order number 4378. Oh, wow. We don't have to do that. Okay. We're just, what we're gonna do, yes. and, and this is a great way to jump in. So what we're gonna do is we look at, um, the these are the pending in progress and rescheduled work orders. Right. So uh, it's a request, the first one's a requested work order, but it's incomplete uh -huh. because either rescheduled or it's in progress or it's pending. Okay. And then this is a work order request underneath it for a vacancy and it's incomplete because they're still working on that vacancy. Okay. The next page is all of the work orders for um, Gold, Golden Court and Burke Way this past month. So it's divided up into categories. There's emergency work orders mm -hmm. and the outcome. So you can see all of the emergency work orders were completed. You know, one thing we do as a board is to look at this and make sure those emergency work orders were completed very quickly within usually within a couple of days and if you look almost all of them were completed same day or the next day right right, right. so then you look at um, inspections the uh, there was an inspection of a uh an, uh, good event? yeah okay uh and that was handled so you look down uh, requested work orders are things that are non-emergency tenants put in the request to have something fixed you can see the types a drip under the kitchen sink front entry lights uh, will only come on halfway blah blah stuff like that these are non-emergency things then you see scheduled work orders these are are things that maintenance is aware of that must be done on a regular schedule and then again the vacancy work order uh, down here they're keeping track of all the hours they spend on vacancies and stuff like that okay and, and there's things when you do a, a vacancy there is a list of things that must be completed and they're when they under vacancy they're keeping track of the the work they do on vacancies even though it's not listed it is listed see well, it says vacancies it has a date and another date and says please do this by end of work shift 8 120 yes because they already know what they're doing we right. don't need their micro well what, that's why i asked yeah. if it was going to be listed no we don't we don't in. need to okay you know. question what is pm what is pm preventative maintenance aha okay. wonderful Inspect, that's wonderful okay and that was already done on seven five yeah so when i go through the work order i just go through emergency i say when it was requested when it was completed and down the line. no no oh. you don't have to mention any of that you just you're actually saying has everyone had a chance to look at the work orders we want to make sure that the emergency work orders are taken care of immediately and they they, they have been consistently exactly. taken care of and then and the other thing we work we look at as commissioners it, it is and of course facilities and the executive director are on this mm -hmm. and that is it, if if we have like <coughs> three pipe breaks in the same building mm -hmm. flooding apartments right Pamela we'll know that there's something going on and we need to look at it right well maintenance will know that they're maintenance will know it. yes sure. they're trained professionals that's what I was saying <laughs> maintenance facilities and you know so but, but it'll be reflected here and that'll heads us up that there's something going on, mm -hmm. right? Uh, same thing, like when we were seeing uh, several apartments in the same two buildings uh, were having insect and pest problems. Mm -hmm. Then we know something's going on, but the people who know what's going on before we ever see it is, maintenance. is facilities maintenance and mm -hmm. our executive director. Because it, it is, that's day to day. Yeah, it's day to day. Okay. So all we're doing is making sure, just just you know, reviewing it to make sure that yeah, maintenance is on it. 
and maintenance is right. indeed on it. Question. Pam, uh, Sue. If you, if you always take the lowest bid, say you take the lowest okay, bid. Okay, we're not on that. Well, uh, I'm I, sorry, I, that's, it's point of order. Well, it's we're just point, there. No, no, it's point of order. <laughs> okay. We've already moved past that. You were given an opportunity for discussion. Well, we I cannot, waited because you were talking. No, I, I asked you okay. for discussion. Um, let's, so okay, let's move please move Thanks. on. <laughs> So um, let's move on. Okay. But but I'm happy to answer your questions after the meeting. I'm not interested in after the meeting. Um, okay. So we're done with the work order report. Board correspondence. I have nothing. Has anyone else received correspondence they need to inform the board about? No. About what? All right. Board, board correspondence. correspondence. Do you have any board correspondence? Has anyone sent you anything that you need to inform the rest of the board about? Nothing. All right. Rich, do you have anything? Else. I have nothing. Okay, commissioners discussion, future meetings. Uh, we already have scheduled September 24th, 2024 at 11 a.m. Uh, I'm proposing the last Tuesday of every month is, uh, and the next one would be October 29th, 2024 at 11 a.m. Uh, does that work for everyone? Right now it does, in case there's anything I'll alert them. Thank you so much. Sue? All right, Rich. So far. So far. Right. We all have things that come up. So, okay. We also have uh, B. Uh, Pamela, you put this on items for a future agenda, the flower bed policy. Do you want I that? I think that just keeps getting carried Keeps over. getting carried over. Okay. Um, and then when we have time, we'll address it. So, mm -hmm. there is no one here from the public except. I, yeah, go I'm ahead. sorry to. Mm -hmm. disagree but so in commissioners discussions I think that would be an opportunity for Sue to ask that question. okay would you like to bring your question like forward? To, yes okay if you always have to take the lowest bid and say for instance you google the person and mm -hmm. they have negative reviews and you don't see any positive reviews on this person do you still have to go with that lowest bid even though when you go out there with the general public, you don't hear good things about that particular company? You do not. So that's um, the, the letter that's attached to the board packet is from our architect, Roy Brown. So what he does is he examines each bid to make sure that the bid is one following the scope of service, which is he's outlined what needs to happen, what materials need to be used, the time frame, all of these things. Um, so he's making sure that every bit includes that same information um, and then he does a background reference check so and he does the reference check okay he does um, it, there have been instances where there's um, where we've worked with a contractor before and it didn't go well so we've said no um, or if we um, and there's been instances where the lowest bidder has a bad reference check and the architect will say he has a bad reference check, and we can we can skip it. So there, absolutely, you don't you don't have to go. We don't the necessarily. Cheaper. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I do have that paperwork now. Oh, good. So we will uh, move again uh, to three F, which is the CFA five zero zero one amendment nine. That is a votable item. Pamela, would you like to present? Uh, I'm going to try. So okay. I'm, I'm handing out this one. It has the wrong chairperson on it, so that's why Risa. And if you check your email, it should be there now. Okay. Oh, so this is our annual. Can you make it any smaller? I know, right? That's the whole the whole contract. So this is the whole contract. That's it. I do have it, Pamela. You I do, do have okay, it now. Cool. Just came. Can you look at open it up and see the dollar amount that they're. Hold on, they've got it all, it's all in DocuSign, and I, here we go. And you want the dollar oh, I, amount? I've got Hold it on. So the, the dollar amount here, this, this, so this is for an increase in our capital funding. So because we, um, we applied for that, I'm sorry, Bruce, that's not, because we, Do you have can this? you share with Crystal? Yeah, I'll share Because we, um, oh, Lord. Oh, no. We applied for that vacant unit turnover money. Mm -hmm. What this CFA is, is we're saying thank you for that money, we'll officially accept it. And it, what it extends our contract with the executive office. Okay. So there's full pages here that say of what the contract is of 
you know, this is, we're providing you with. I'm giving you that so you can find that. I cannot see that. Even Big Eat, I can't see oh, that. Oh, just got it here to start. Yeah. She yeah. needs it on this because that's the actual thing I signed. Yeah. So. Got one, one day How long is the contract going to be extended to? Yeah. A, a year. One year, okay. Yeah. But, um, but in the, it's a typical, where'd my contract go? I don't, that one's got the wrong. I would sign it even though it has David's to name. You want to revise? Yeah. Revise budget? Yep. So, yeah, the amendment's one. Right there, one million, two hundred, ten thousand? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, revise. what's this figure right here? One, 190. 193. Yep. Okay. 922. Are you trying to show me? I, I don't see. You asked me to look for the amount. I know I got the amount now. You do. I, okay. I just need you to sign it when they say it's okay. So, that in this box right here, Right. It'll say con contract amendment. So we're um, the current co the contract end date was June thirtieth. No, no, I see that. Twenty twenty six. They're going to give us an additional one hundred ninety three thousand nine hundred twenty two dollars. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And does it extend? It does. It didn't. It doesn't extend the contract, but it just does say. We're giving you this money. Will you take it? And we say, "Why, well, yes, thank you." Yes. <laughs> so we just approve the acceptance of this additional subsidy. Can I get a motion so to question? Uh, so can we, can we save it for discussion? No, because I'm no. asking right okay. here. Okay. It says contract date ends, so that it doesn't stay in here any extension of it. Correct. Oh. I misspoke. Yeah. Okay. Many times it, they will. Um, like each year when they give us cap, we'll do lots of these. Okay. Each, it'll extend because it's. Oh. Um, so year. we take a subsidy. We have under the obligations of taking a subsidy from the Commonwealth, we have to follow laws and right. AUPs and PMRs and, and, this and amount, spend the money on capital. And this amount is to help fix what's here? Yes. Okay. And to yep. whatever our housing in Hadley. Just and, our housing. Oh, yes. this is just for Hadley. Just for Hadley. Oh, cool. That's yeah. excellent. Yeah, it's a lot of money. <laughs> yes, it is. That's great. All right. We're happy to get it. I know, because it's it's something that Hadley needs. I mean, it's excellent. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. now I will call for a motion to approve CFA 5001 uh, Amendment 9 in the amount of $1,210,576.75. Can I get a motion? I need a motion. Crystal Jackson motion. Second. Can I get a second? Rich seconds. I'll call for discussion. Sue. Yes. Crystal. No. Oh, yeah. Right, that's yeah. not a vote. It's do you have yeah. questions? No, no, no questions. Have no questions. Yeah. Crystal, no questions. I have no questions. Rich no has questions. no questions. Call for the vote. Sue. Yes. Crystal. Yes. Risa is yes. yes. Rich is yes. So carried. We now have approved CFA 5001 Amendment 9. So send it, sign it so they'll send it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Send the money. Send the money. Please and thank you. Okay. Ma'am? It is adopted and signed. Thank goodness. Thank you. <laughs> I feel so much richer here. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to ask, so we're done with the executive director report and all the things that had to be voted on and discussed. Uh, no board correspondence. We're back to commissioner's discussion. We have flower bed policy for items for future agenda which we will not be taking up until we're ready for it right mm -hmm. Pamela yeah. okay so the I'm gonna go around and ask if there are uh, as part of commissioners discussion items for future agenda if there's anything any commissioner would like to see on a future agenda Sue give us a minute to think about it okay doke we'll come <laughs> right back to you Crystal, no, you're okay? Yes, I just, I have to look into it. I don't have anything for right now. Right, the second. Right. Okay. Uh, Rich? I have nothing right now. No. Okay. Hold on a minute. I made a list, but not everything's up for that. Um, Who gave you coffee today? <laughs> I 
I know. Girl, I have only had my, t in fact, I cut my coffee consumption in half. You might have a second career of being an auctioneer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to get she out of here. I know. <laughs> I'm just trying to get out of here. Okay. So like items, <laughs> items for oh, wait, oh, wait, no, wait, I gotta think. <laughs> no, items for future discussion is tell Brisa to cut it back by Did another twenty five percent. Yeah. Meditate before coming. Okay. Um, I do need to have a uh, uh, Yeah, that uh, we'll we can talk Yeah. And um, one thing we've talked about before is the public housing notices. And I just want to make sure that all the commissioners are aware that all of them, going back years, are available online. And there is a search function. So uh, rather than ask Pamela to come and give a presentation on every single new PHN comes out, I think that we need to take the responsibility <coughs> to actually go to EOHLC's website with the PHNs and do some due diligence ourselves and review those new PHNs. There's also a whole bunch of stuff going to come out according to this new housing bond bill, right? Yep. Uh, so, and remember, with PHNs, some will affect commissioners and how we operate. But most is day-to-day -day executive director and staff that we have really nothing to do with. So uh, it's not a whole lot of work to find out anything that men mentions commissioners, then we should look up. But you can use a search function for that. Excuse me. Are these yes. public record right away are just available to the board members and then to the public afterwards? The PHNs are available to anyone. anyone. It's yeah. open to the public. Yeah, Everyone we, can look at them. We get at the same time it's posted on the website. Yeah. Or, okay. yeah. You, you might, because of your your connections, find out about something. But well, well, we know that they're working on they're things. They're working so on things. Because yeah. they like to get a lot of feedback to the yeah. But. yeah. And my other question is, who decides if something becomes a PHN? Is there a committee? No, it's the PHNs come from the executive office. So, so Ben Stone, to, at this point, is typically writing them. But there's been former directors of EOHLC that DHCD that wrote, do it, wrote, write it, and it's signed by whoever, what department it came from. The big wigs down in Boston, they they decide. The people that hide out. <laughs> yeah. Hide now out. there's a bunch coming gonna come out about the housing bond bill, some stuff could affect where we put our goals and what we're looking forward to, but you're going to let us know about that mm -hmm. as you figure a way forward for Hadley Housing Authority. I do have, um, tomorrow I have a meeting with people from the executive office and our construction um, supervisor so there's going to be a, an in-house architect, um, the head of the sustainability department, and then construction to talk about phasing out our fossil fuels, because mm. that's an initiative in the Commonwealth, mm. um, and there's money for them to do it. So we're, Finally. yeah, I've, all, you know, I've always been a little trepidatious about it, and um, but if they can do it all at once, because it doesn't, it never made sense to me, like we have that one uh, two family that's vacant right now. I, you know, if I put in central air and heat, all the neighbors are going to be like, "That's not fair." Exactly. And it's true. Well, you do it anyway. T if they say that's not fair, you have the right to do it. I mean, no, I know. Eventually, but everyone just, will have it, right? I mean, one of the 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 cornerstones of our industry is that it's fair and consistent. Yeah. Exactly. So if I'm paying my twenty oh, at family housing, they pay twenty seven percent. I'm paying my twenty seven percent. And you're not giving me air conditioning, but exactly. they have it. It's and not fair. But it's got to like become an issue, and that's something you want to avoid. Just, right. You want to just be equal and fair to everyone, so no one feels left out or right. feels singled out that they're not. Or it can lead to a whole array of right. problems. Mm -hmm. So you just want to make sure everything. And Pam, are together. you looking into solar at all? I mean, how many housing authorities in the valley actually have gone solar? Any yet? Belchertown. Belchertown? Years ago, I oh, really? Belchertown. So yeah, the the um, Everett Acres and East Walnut are powered by a solar field uh, in Western Mass, 
and it's it, it it's not on our property. We bought the net metering credits, and it funds it powers those two, offsets the bill. So those two. I I'm still looking, and I'm going to talk to them again. I, I talked to some of the people at the conference that mm -hmm. we went to. I really like which that, that you know our conversation when we first started today. The the solar on the parking canopies. So you park under the canopy. Your car's protected from rain, birds, um, snow, but at the same time, the solar panels are there. So it it's, does a dual purpose. It'll be easier for our seniors and disabled to clean off their cars in the winter. They won't have to move them, right? Yeah, right. yeah exactly. It's, it's, the UMass has in one of our Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, yeah it really works well. So. The, if I remember right, the holdup before when there was this push for the mini splits and the heat pumps and all that is the state wanted us to do it but there really wasn't adequate funding Correct. to do it Correct. and that's now changed with this housing bond <coughs> i believe so yes. yeah and that was our problem too with the when we bought the new maintenance vehicle mm -hmm. we wanted to go electric or even some form of hybrid mm -hmm. but there really wasn't enough incentive it, it was way too expensive for us to buy it and they weren't providing the credits the ability, at the time. Well, yeah. and the ability to plug it in either. They, it was just you got no way to plug it in. Right. Yeah. Is a mini split considered advancement rather than having a boiler and a hot water heater? Is they are they considered about like one step up? Well, for the people that are looking at fossil fuel, it is. <laughs> so yeah. it it is. It'll be nice because it's up. Um, it's up on the wall as opposed to in your window. So it, it'll give you back your windows, which is nice. For air um, conditioning and, it and do, heat. It yeah. does air conditioning and heat. And oh, sorry, right. no. And also for people who um, are on fixed income, they can get fuel assistance as well because it will be electric. So they can get fuel assistance and fuel assistance will help with the electric over mm -hmm. the winter so their bill is not an exuberant amount. So they did some changes too in okay. this bond bill to, um, uh, over the folks that are going to electric because we did find in Belchertown when those four units were converted from oil into um, the mini splits, electric, electric. Their bills went through the roof. Exactly. And the and fuel uh, fuel assistance was not enough. <gasps> Nowhere near wow. enough. I mean, they they've got five and six hundred dollar bills. Oh my goodness. So that's what the housing authority took over their electric bills. Oh. And then it w and we have that ability to, to provide them the uh, uh, utility. They do pay a higher percent. They pay thirty percent, like our elders and our disabled. Um, and then we put that on the bill with the solar field. So it worked oh, out. Okay. But that's a big part of the conversation tomorrow is, mm. you know, you can't, for our tenants um, in elders, elderly housing, it's included. Mm, so it, our costs would increase. Right. But so, for our family units, yeah. we, can't, I, we can't let that happen. And basically you said this is in Belchertown and you've affiliated with the solar. And that's how it's offsetting because they have the solar. But if there's towns such as Amherst and, and possibly Happy that do not have the solar, you can't do much to help in that area. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Unless I find another solar field. Exactly. Yeah. It's hard. Which Actually, could I happen. My eye. Well, I have my eye on one. Yeah. <laughs> I know you do. I know you do. I know you do. Excuse me, but can money come from the Community Preservation Commission to give money for um, mini splits? Yes, mm. for for the for the installation of them, not for the bills of right. as far as oh, not utilities bills, goes, right. but yeah, I think Community Preservation would would welcome any pretty much any application. This round, we're going to be doing the doors, though. We really want to get the, the doors. And that one window in the kitchen. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Because they're almost attached to each other. Yeah. Absolutely. When you say the doors, which doors? Bedroom doors, outside uh, doors? Outside, ex exterior and rear doors. So you the take place. they take those off and just replace them all yeah, the way. Yeah, a new door. Now, yeah. also, there's uh, the electric company, Western Mass, West Mass Save. Mm -hmm. They are doing the mini splits and everything for free for homeowners and and so forth in apartments. So in housing or commercial um, buildings, we use the lane program, which is oh, very okay. similar. Okay. And that's something they're going to be talking to okay, me about yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, too. because I, I know a few people um, who own houses in Hadley, they were fortunate enough to get that and they're 
getting everything they need to be more efficient for their tenants, right. which is an excellent thing to do. It just it looks out for your tenants because, again, like you said, the air conditioner is no longer in the window. Right. And, you know, but the, the split between, yes, you can use oil still, and if you want to use the, the mini split, you can so that your electric bill is not so high. Yeah. 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 And they have, they've really come to the realization, they were talking about it last fall, with the way our climate is, it you know, everyone down south has air conditioning. It's right. a given. Up here, it's been very slow and it's sporadic, and we've got them in in windows, but we really need heat. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, air conditioning. Yeah, it's yeah. we've got hot summers, humid. It you know anybody with asthma problems yeah. or and that air allergies. conditioner, you, you can't just put it in and take it out and put it in and take it out. It's just it's just not convenient and. When it's a nice breezy day, you want the fresh air, but you have your air conditioner in the window. Right. And it's a lot. It's a lot. Oh, should be great. Should be good. Well, thank you so much, Pamela. So, yeah. <laughs> is it commissioner's discussion is a really nice and I have time. A question. Any, yes, any luck on finding anything about the board training? I did reach out and I have not heard not heard. So Sue has yet. diligently been trying okay. to get in there and it's it's definitely I not even her. went it's to the everybody program. in the office and the she did it and we're using they can't get on either. the passwords that we were given right and can't do it it's have it's you received anything crystal yet from star what is it called star track star track star yeah it's so hopefully by the end of the week but I think we were working on that again last week was it or was it the week before I think it was last week yeah because she were she was here in the office and it, it just didn't work mm -mm. Nope. No. So Crystal hasn't gotten anything from Track Start either. Yeah, there's a problem. There's a problem. Okay, so that's on hold till that can be fixed. But but uh, for both of you, <coughs> you did Pamela, I think, send to Crystal and Sue the paper manual. Oh yeah, we have that. The yeah. electronic, you know, paper manual. It's mm -hmm. not updated, but it uh, it's a good. Well, it is the most updated. It's the 2014, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah, they're, they're working on it. You'll learn a lot at conference. I'm sorry mm -hmm. that Sue and Rich can't come this time, but um, you'll definitely learn. There's a lot on the agenda. A lot, yeah. Uh, another question. When a person lives in family housing, what's the age limit that they can live there? Can a person have children still in college and then still live in family housing? Or once their children graduate from high school, then they have to seek other housing? So it really goes by the, the number of people and the number of bedrooms. So if they have, and it happens a lot actually, if you have a family with a three bedroom, oldest child goes off to school, while the child's in school, that's still considered their residence. But it, you know, when they graduate, they leave home, who would have thought? Um, if they do, then they're if they do. <laughs> yeah, right, they'll be in college and come home and say, oh, I'm gonna, I stay home. I stay yeah. home. Um, then they would be overhoused. So then they would be required to move to a two bedroom. So you kind of you go through that process, and then sometimes, and we don't have a lot of two bedrooms. There's not a huge stock in the Commonwealth for two. Bedrooms. So you are you two and three back here? No, this three. Is all three. All three. Yes, in Amherst and in Belchertown, I have two bedrooms. But again, not that's the least amount. So sometimes there's this in between. When they get down to one, if they can't, if we don't have the two, so they we can't kick them out unless they're overhoused and over income. So they're down so, to one and the person is graduated from high school. Can they continue to stay as long as a child is in college somewhere or in a trade school? Right. And then <coughs> that's it. And then, and then what period of time is a family given in order to transition out? Say they've been there 15, 20 years raising their children. When they're no, when the, when they're no, the only occupant is them. Or if it's a husband and wife. Right. You know, it's only, when they're down to overhoused, over income, it's, it, it's even if they're overhoused and they're one, we then start to look and say, are they, could they possibly fall into the category of disabled or elderly? And then we would move them to six, six, seven housing. But if not, is there people to help people transition when they've been there a long period of time raising their family and now it's time to go? Because there's a housing crunch in our area. What yes. happens to those people? Are they, I guess they're given a certain amount of time in order to 
find housing. Yes, definitely. Right. We really haven't run into the situation where, I mean, in our federal property in the Amherst right now, we're trying to go through, we're, we're moving people. And it, it's very strategic where it's, okay, this, this size unit came, a two bedroom came available. So we moved the three to the two and then the four, we have some four bedrooms. They moved to the three and it's a lot of work for everybody, but it's getting everybody into the right spot so that um, you can bring in a, the new person at the new spot. I have yeah. a question. What if a person receives a voucher for one bedroom? They can't apply for a two bedroom, correct? No, not without a re if they're if they're one person. Um, they would only re get the one bedroom unless they had a reasonable accommodation. And there aren't really any one bedrooms, as you stated. In Amherst, there's two and three bedrooms mm -hmm. only, and out here, three bedrooms. So, yeah. But the problem is when you give a two bedroom, like we, I do the reasonable accommodations, you get a lot of reasonable accommodations for, it's my medical equipment. I need, right. And they've got a walker or a cane. So I'm going to give a, a voucher, and, and and that's a significant amount of money, which yes. then takes away the number of vouchers that we can exactly. give um, for a bedroom for your king. Yeah, and one more question. You're yeah. done. <laughs> so yeah. I just was, was wondering that, because there are quite a few people, you know, who get one-bedroom vouchers, <coughs> and they can't find anything, and yeah. they've waited months, they keep sure. trying, and they go to the extension, and they still can't find a one-bedroom, so I just, I wondered if maybe the Housing Authority worked with some people um, to provide them with possibly a two-bedroom, but that will never happen. Well, it, 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 again, Unless it depends it's reasonable if there's a reasonable But other than yeah. that, no. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. against regulate. So yeah. we, the regulation says you get a, a oh, bedroom right. for a person. Yeah. Um, and when it comes to children, you're sharing. The kids are. I was going to ask you, what if they have a child? Is it still a one bedroom? No, that's two bedroom. Okay, no, no matter if it's a boy or a girl. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. I have yeah. one more question. Everybody have kids. <laughs> I'd like to know more about what's happening with the Champ application now that more Healy's in, and I did hear that there's <coughs> agencies now helping Champ because Champ is so backed up that they have different groups oh, yeah. that are actually helping them process the applications. Have you heard anything new about what's happening with the Champ applications? Is it the backup still as bad as it was a year ago? So they're, t they're talking about the um, what more, what the, with this vacancy initiative, what happened last year was that they hired an outside company, ASG, ASG, Pam, A-E-G, A-S-G. A-G-I? A-G-I, thank you. A-G-I? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't, they only they only um, verify vet the priority application. So somebody that's saying they're um, like a van. a number one right. right a fire, flood, a domestic violence things of that nature. They vet that, and that was supposed to move the process. They did find out that it's really hard, so they're behind too. Oh wow! Which is why the housing authorities were behind on that too. But it does it is making a big difference for us we our issues right now are really they're not champ it's that's really been cleared up because once they took what was happening before AIG came in and took over when we would pull a list you know, people go in and add applications all days and times you could pull a list this morning and then go in in the afternoon and it's a completely different list. Mm -hmm. So what, so I'm telling, in the old days, I could say to you, oh, Crystal, you're number 10 on the list. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what number you are. There's no number anymore. There's, really? a, there's application numbers, and you come up on a list, but oh, the list goodness. changes. And then somebody with a priority goes to the top of the list. Right. So we would pull a list, and we're getting folks from the eastern part of the state that have applied at all the housing authorities, and we have to filter through them first. We we have to vet them. Goodness so, gracious! So it was a very it was a lot of waste mm -hmm. um, and prolonged things. But that's really cleared up now. Oh, it is clear now. Yeah. Can now we just have the maintenance issues with it, oh, okay. <laughs> waiting for the money. Yeah. Can you give us an idea of how many people are on six six seven wait list and how many are on seven zero five wait list? So this um, six six seven is. Well over ten thousand. There's six, six, seven. Yeah, for Hadley, for Hadley, and then seven oh five is, is probably four to five thousand. 
I thought it was more four to five thousand for six, six, seven, and ten thousand for family. Yeah, yeah, it's it's. Oh my God. Yeah. How is that even yeah, possible? I, I know. <coughs> yeah, I know. And that, that wait list just cleaned yeah, up oh, compared to what it was six, a year six, seven, ago. Senior just oh, right. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Jeez, Pamela. Yeah, because there's always people in need. Yeah, but we need more housing in Hatch. Everywhere housing. needs Every, more yeah, housing, yeah, needs space. more public housing. But we are just, uh, I've been reading up on the Faircloth Amendment problem. Mm -hmm. So the Faircloth cloth Amendment, 1999, uh, reset the MAC. To, you correct me if I mess this up, but um, so in 1999, the Faircloth Amendment stopped, was it federal or and state or just federal? Both. Both. It stopped the creation of any additional units. Federal, I'm sorry, it was federal. Federal, federal, unless needed to replace what was present back in what, 1946 or something? Not sure. So, so whatever was in 1946, and we're talking, they did a kind of per capita thing back then to figure out a rough idea of, of what every city and town needed for the number of units. The Faircloth Amendment in 1999 stopped that. So uh, it was, it was, um, if, if we had 52 units, that's the most we can ever have kind of thing. There's ways around that though, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they're coming up with ways around it. Coming up with ways around it. But uh, that's why essentially no public housing has been built in decades other than replacement units, right? So Connell Lodge is, is now... But it, that's not public housing. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's subsidized, but it is a private developer. Right. Yeah. So, that's right. so it'll be like Winfield in a way? Um, it'll be what you call affordable housing? It, where it has all full market value, people on subsidies and also... Uh, it's my understanding that that project is... A, Everyone that's going to live there is going to have a subsidy. Right. Everyone. So it's yeah, one bedroom in a, um, like a market rate. Yeah, there, it's one bedrooms and studios only, and we find because I'm on the HED, mm -hmm. so we finally got the approval last year, I believe it was, and it's only going to be for one bedrooms and studios. So it's as Pamela said, it's not going to be the Section Eight and State Housing, but it is subsidized. Subsidized. So the point is, the number of housing units per capita has been stopped, basically. The number of public housing units has been stopped at that old level. So it hasn't taken into consideration increases in population size or, or economic need or any of that. And that's the problem. That's why we have a housing crisis. But you said there's a way around that. We're working on it, right? The state's working on it. And I hope that we, as a board, will take advantage of that at our first opportunity to in increase our number of units when we're able. And Pamela's going to guide us through <laughs> that process, OK? No pressure, people. No pressure, people. You know everything that's going on, Ms. Rogers. So. Um, is there anything else for commissioners' discussion? Any burning questions you have? Nothing more. Nothing more, Rich? Nothing more. No. Then um, I sh and we have no members of the public here that want to ask any questions. And I will uh, ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Crystal makes a motion. Can I get a second? Second. Second. Does everybody agree? Vote. Yes. Yes. 100%. Yes. Okay. All right.